So how is everybody today? Good? Great. So welcome everybody here today and welcome to Facebook on live YouTube when you watch this at a later date. So let's pray. Father God, speak through my voice today. Unlock revelation in people's hearts and minds. Amen. Thank you, God. Today I get to speak about one of my favourite topics, and that is joy. Now, joy is a fruit of the Spirit, which means it is an outworking of the Holy Spirit's leading, guiding, and direction in our lives. Let's just revisit this for a second. God the Father, who created everything, sent His Son Jesus to earth as a baby to grow up and to minister to many. He felt what we felt so that he would empathise and sympathise with our lives. He then died on a cross in our place and took all of our sins upon himself so that we could be free and receive salvation and be reunited into relationship with him. Then after three days inside the tomb, God resurrected him and he appeared all over the earth to his disciples and many others. Then God took him back to heaven. After that, he sent the Holy Spirit to earth. In John 14, verse 26, in the Amplified Version, it says, But the Helper, the Comforter, the Advocate, the Intercessor, the Counselor, the Strengthener, the Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, this is what Jesus said, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things and he will help you to remember everything that I have told you. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. When we are born again, we receive Jesus into our hearts. Then we can be water baptised and Holy Spirit filled. When we are Holy Spirit filled, our spirit can communicate to God in a heavenly language, which is tongues that can communicate to God spirit to spirit. In the worship today, you might have heard that language and wondered what it was, but it was our spirit singing to God in the spirit. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, we begin to display aspects of that fruit outworking in our lives and in the interactions that we have with people in the community around us. The fruit of the spirit is found in Galatians 5, verse 23 to 25. So I'm going to read that out of the Passion Translation. Everyone's really quiet today. Is everyone okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Good listening. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all of its varied expressions. Joy that overflows. Peace that subdues patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart and strength of spirit. So never set the law above these qualities for they are meant to be limitless. It then goes on to say, let everyone be devoted to fulfil the work that God has given them to do with excellence and their joy will be in doing what's right and being themselves and not in being affirmed by others. Every believer is ultimately responsible for his or her own conscience. So the next scripture is in John 15, verse 5 to 12. I'm going to read that out of the Passion Translation as well. And it says, this is God saying, I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my Father." I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, for I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. 
My purpose for telling you these things is so that your, the joy that I experience will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. And then in the NIV it says, Remain in my love. I've told you these things so that you'll be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. So who remembers this song from Sunday school? <laughs> I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Oh, beautiful singing. <laughs> well, that's a great song, isn't it? But it's, um, so being happy or sad are emotions, but joy is something that is much deeper, deeper down in our hearts. And it helps us to overcome situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in. It helps us to find solutions and answers to problems. No matter what is going on around us, it is constant. And it does, doesn't let us give in or give up. So keep going today. In Nehemiah 8 verse 10 it says, Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drink and send some food to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So in Nehemiah, in the earlier chapters, it said that Ezra the priest and chief scribe read the law of Moses to the people and explained to them what, it, what, it, what they meant. He did this for six hours while the people listened intently and wept as they were convicted and they gained a revelation of God's word. A six-hour sermon. Can you imagine that? Sometimes we can't even sit still for 20 minutes. And I think that's a long time, but how great was that? That once they understood and had a revelation of the Word, they wanted to hear more, and it convicted their hearts, so it made them weep as well. So, yeah. So I'm going to read Nehemiah 8.10 again. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some food to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. From this scripture, God wants us to enjoy our lives, but also to give to others that have nothing. Also to love one another and make sure that others aren't lacking. God's abundance in our lives means to have more than enough for ourselves and our families, to give to others and to advance God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. As I was writing this, I got a vision of an old-fashioned water pump with a big handle that you have to push down a few times and prime it before the water gets drawn up. So when we don't feel joy, joyful, we need to prime our pumps and go deeper with God. I felt like that this morning. I'm just going to be real. I needed to prime my pump and feel that joy well up from within. As we wait upon God in his presence until his anointing overflows through us. When we get angry, tired and frustrated at people, we are doing things in our own strength instead of God's strength in his timing or in his will. So just spend time with him in his presence, in his word, with worship music playing and pray to God and he will supernaturally refresh and refill us. I have a light up joy. I don't know if you remember, but I have the joy, J-O-N-Y, but it's in storage at the moment. So my joy is being contained <laughs> until we find a place. But today I just wanted to use the letters joy as an acronym. So J is for Jesus. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart and you ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide your life, that is one of the best decisions that you could ever do in your life. You will never be alone and he'll hold your hand and walk with you through life. And when you die, you'll go to heaven and live in eternity with Father God. What an amazing relationship you can have with such a loving, kind, heavenly Father that wants to spend quality time with you. He also has such an amazing plan and purpose for each one of our lives. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I know the plans and purposes that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. So the O in joy is for others. 
Let's treat others the way that we would like to be treated ourselves. Be kind. Say loving, encouraging words to the people around you. Build people up and don't tear them down or hurt people's feelings intentionally. Sometimes we unintentionally hurt people's feelings, but if we know that we've hurt someone, we need to make it right. If you want to be a good friend and have and maintain long-lasting friendships, be friendly and make people feel loved and like they belong. Include them in your conversations. Sit with them, invite them out for coffee or lunch. If you have arguments or disagreements, say sorry and forgive people and move forward. Now the why in joy is yourself. You need to look after yourself and care for yourself. It's very important. We all need to eat healthy, nutritious foods and try to eat our vegetables. I'm speaking to myself <laughs> on our plates. So who eats breakfast? Put your hand up if you have a nutritional breakfast. Oh, good work, guys. <laughs> so this week, um, eating breakfast sets us up for the day, but God has been telling me all this week, normally I just grab a coffee and go to work, but he intentionally made me eat breakfast every day this week. And it does make a difference to your life. <laughs> um, and if you're really busy, like me, and have to grab a coffee, you can make a protein shake or something on the way or prepare beforehand, just so your, your brain and your body is getting the nutrition that it needs to focus well. Yeah? Anyway, I'm saying that to myself. <laughs> also, we need to get lots of sleep. I know we hear this all the time, you need to eat, you need to sleep, you need to exercise, but we do need to sleep. Don't stay up late playing games or social media scrolling or watching too much TV, news programs, or podcasts. Especially in these current times, be careful what you see, what you look at, what you hear, and what you taste, so that we have healthy minds, bodies, and souls. Also drink more water, especially in North Queensland, and try to cut out soft drink. I'm speaking to myself again. <laughs> we need to worship God, hunger and thirst for more of His Word, and more of his presence. So in Psalm 16 verse 11, in the New King James Version, it says, you will show me the path of life, for in your presence is fullness of joy. Now I just want to read Psalm 16 out of the Passion Translation, 7 to 11. And it says, the way you counsel and correct me makes me praise you more, for your whispers in the night give me wisdom showing me what to do next. Because you are close to me and always available, my confidence will never be shaken. For I experience your wraparound presence every moment. My heart and my soul explode with joy, full of glory. Even my body will rest confident and secure. For you will not abandon me to the realm of death, nor will you allow your Holy One to experience corruption. For you bring me, a continual revelation of resurrection life, the path to the bliss that brings me face to face with you. So I just want to thank you, Father. Let's pray. Father God, help each one of us to be overflowing with your joy today. Let it go deep down into our hearts like seeds that are planted and nurtured so that they will grow and flourish and produce fruit and a harvest of joy in our lives so that we can encourage and refresh others with your unfailing love. Thank you, Father, that the joy of the Lord is our strength and our stronghold. And we hold on to that today. Amen.